Hi, this is Bill from Sparky Channel. Today I'd like to show you how to add a receptacle downstream from this two gang box. The two gang box includes a GFCI receptacle and a standard receptacle which is protected by the GFCI receptacle. Our new downstream receptacle must also be protected by the GFCI receptacle. This video is for educational purposes only and only those competent in electrical wiring and electrical safety procedures should attempt this wiring. Make sure the electricity is off prior to starting. First, we will need to turn off the circuit breaker that controls the circuit, which includes this double gang box. One clue that we have turned off the correct circuit breaker is that the green LED light on the GFCI receptacle will turn off. Also, I'll check the GFCI receptacle with my Fluke non-contact voltage tester. An outlet tester will also show that the power is off. Once I'm satisfied that the electricity is off, I'll remove the screws that hold the waterproof cover. Exterior receptacles should always have an approved weatherproof cover and the receptacles should be weather resistant. Now I'll pull the receptacles out and I will remove the black electrical tape that was wrapped around the terminals. I'll remove the plug that is found on the bottom of this exterior two gang box. I'll be running half inch EMT from this two gang box to a single gang box where I'll install a weather resistant receptacle. In the EMT I'll run a green ground wire, a white neutral wire, and a black hot wire. So now let's connect the wires that will be going to our new downstream receptacle in such a way that the downstream receptacle will be protected by GFCI. The first thing that I'll do will be to connect the new ground wire to the existing ground wires. Since there is a five gang Wago lever nut in the box and there's only four ground wires going to it, I'll connect the new ground wire to the open spot on the Wago lever nut. Now before we install the new white neutral and black hot wires let's look at the back of the GFCI receptacle. This is the line area. That's where the hot and neutral of your line cable go. They attach to the line area of the GFCI. If I was to install our new neutral and hot wires here on the line area our new downstream receptacle would be powered but it would not be protected by GFCI. This is the load area of the GFCI. I put the white and neutral pigtail wires that go to the adjacent receptacle here. When you put wires on the load area of the GFCI the device that the wires serve will be protected by GFCI. We want our new downstream receptacle to be protected by GFCI so we could attach the new neutral and hot wires here and that would work. The downside would be that we would be doubling up on the load terminals of the GFCI. That is both the pigtails that go to the adjacent receptacle and the wires that will feed our downstream receptacle would have to be attached to these terminals. The way that I would prefer to run the new neutral and hot wires would be to run them to the empty terminals of the adjacent receptacle. The receptacle is the load of the GFCI, so if I attach the new neutral and hot wires to the free silver and bronze colored terminals respectively, then our new downstream receptacle would be powered as well as be protected by GFCI. And a benefit of doing it this way would be that our new neutral and hot wires will be attached to their own terminals. Now I'll install the white neutral wire to the empty silver terminal of the receptacle. And I'll install the new hot black wire to the empty bronze colored terminal of the receptacle. In this way the new downstream receptacle will receive power in a GFCI protected manner. Now I'll wrap the receptacles with black electrician's tape, dress the wires, push the receptacles in to where I want them, and then I'm going to use the extra long screws that come with the weatherproof cover. 
Then I'll use a little bit of clear caulking on the top of the box and both sides. And then I will install the weatherproof cover by putting it on and sliding it to the right. And then I'll tighten down the screws. After the cover is tightened nicely, I'll turn on the circuit breaker and use my outlet tester to see that it is correctly wired. And then I'll use the test button to see if the GFCI controls both of the receptacles. Now I'll test out the downstream receptacle to make sure it's properly wired and protected by GFCI. Here we see it is properly wired and when I press the test button on the GFCI it goes off so it is controlled by the GFCI. I'll put links in my video description for all the various tools I used in making this video. We have DeWalt and Fluke and Ideal and Klein and Kinepex and and last but not least we have a Volt Claw. <laughs> and I'll put links for the Wago Lever Nuts. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.